Good evening, fellow programmers. Thanks for joining me. I'm T Payne, and welcome to Let's Learn Python. Feel free to use the skip ahead feature on the right hand side to jump to a specific section or the examples. Today we'll be using Python 2.7.4, and you can download it from python.org slash get it. Today we'll be focusing on abstract base classes and multiple inheritance. This is the third part in the object oriented programming series. This will build heavily on past lessons, so feel free to go back and watch them again if anything isn't clear. All right, so an abstract base class. What is this? Well, base classes that we've created in the past were all able to be instantiated. This is where an abstract class comes in. Now we're going to create a class that cannot be instantiated. In other words, you can only use it to build subclasses from. So this is an abstract class, but you may also hear it be called a virtual class. All right, so let's begin with our first example. Let's go ahead and open up idle, and we're going to go ahead and create a new file. I'm going to go ahead and name it abstract classes examples.py. After that, go ahead and save it, and let's begin. First, we're going to import some stuff. So start out by typing from abc import uppercase abc meta and also abstract method, all lowercase. And now we're going to go ahead and create our base class. So that's class, capital B for base, capital C for class, open, and then we're going to inherit from the object class from Python, enter, underscore, underscore, meta class, underscore, underscore, is equal to ABC meta, enter. So what this is doing is it's setting up the meta class, which is built in with the, with the object class, to basically be an abstract based class, okay? And after that, we're going to go ahead and type in at, with an at symbol, abstract method. And what this is, is this is a decoration. We're going to press enter and then type in and then we're going to type in def to declare a function prints ham our go to and then in the arguments we're going to type self close um, colon enter and of course just type print and then we're just going to type pass okay enter enter and we're going to unindent and now we're going to create the inheriting class so type class in class inherit from the base class colon enter and then we're going to redefine that print ham that we declared above so type def print ham open parentheses self close parentheses colon enter print and then ham all right Right, so let's go ahead and test this out, see if it's working. After this, type x is equal to base class to see if we can create an instance of the base class. We should expect to find an error. Perfect. So this error says cannot instantiate abstract class with abstract method perform print ham. And that's basically saying since we have this abstract method within here and we have declared this as an abstract base class, we cannot instantiate base class. What we can do is instantiate it's inheriting class. So just type in down below, save, F5 to run, perfect. So there was no errors whatsoever. And now we can just type x.printham to call the function and it prints him. Perfect, that's exactly what we expect. So what you saw up here is the uh, at sign and then abstract method. And this is what's called a decorator. And what it is, is it's a way to dynamically alter functions or classes without inheritance or subclasses. And we're going to be covering decorators later on um, when we start to, uh, going over PyQt stuff. So why use abstract classes? In the previous lesson, we had a base character class and then a barber and an archer subclasses. So unless you wanted some boring and indistinct character like Slenderman, then you'd want to force the programmers not to create that base class. So this is a way to do just that. Also, it forces certain methods or functions to be defined in that inheriting class. Finally, it forces those functions to be named a certain predictable way. Otherwise, they will not override correctly. And now we're going to cover multiple inheritance. So what is it? Well, it's exactly what you'd think it'd be. Creating a subclass that inherits from multiple base classes. If you've completed previous challenges, you may be familiar with this. So let's go ahead and try an example. I'm going to save this file and create a new one. I'm going to save this file as mult inheritance example.py. So just as before, we're going to go ahead and import from abc import uppercase abc meta and also abstract method then we're going to go ahead and create a base enemy class called class enemy it's going to inherit from object so other classes can inherit from it colon enter again this is going to be a meta class underscore underscore is equal to abc meta and then we're going to go ahead and declare a function and before we do that we're going to type at abstract method enter now we're going to declare that function def tack player and then this is and here we're just going to type self comma player and this is just so that the player would be passed in so we could like subtract his health or whatever we wanted to do after that just type pass unindent and we're going to begin a new class type class environment asset 
And it's going to inherit from the object class. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy these other two lines right here, paste. And then we're going to type def underscore and access the constructor of the class by typing def init self in the arguments, colon enter and type self dot mobile equal to false. And this is just to say that environment assets cannot move. So now we're going to inherit from both of these classes. So what is an instance that you would think an environment asset would also be an enemy asset, a trap. So let's create a trap class. So class space trap open parentheses and then inherit from both enemy and environment asset class colon enter. And now we need to override the previous functions that we created in the abstract classes. So first we're going to do the constructor def underscore init underscore underscore self open close parentheses enter. And then we're going to initialize both base classes. So trap using super comma trap comma self close parentheses dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore open close parentheses. So now we've overloaded one function. Next, let's overload the attack player function. So type def tag player self comma player colon enter. And then we're gonna just go ahead and type return player dot health minus 10. Okay, and that's it. And what this is doing in this attack player function is it's just returning 10 less of his health. That's all. Finally, let's go ahead and create an instance of the trap to make sure that's working. So x equals trap open close parentheses, save and F5 to run. Perfect, there were no errors, it compiled correctly. So it worked. All right, so why use this? Well, as you can see, sometimes there may be instances where you want to combine different attributes of single classes together. So rather than creating a new class from scratch, you can just inherit from both. But be warned, this can break the class and will most likely need tweaking to accomplish what you want. All right, thank you so much for watching. Great job keeping up. Definitely take a few minutes to investigate these final challenges as they really have some thought provoking concepts within them. Please leave me a comment below if this helped you. Also do me a huge favor and subscribe to my channel. It would really mean a lot to me. Thanks so much for your support and keep the dream alive.